Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Dot. Um. <laughs> Uh, today is going to be an interesting conversation. I have a uh, Ethan Zahn and Anthony Sullivan, uh, Mr. Sullivan, who is definitely a company, a company man drinking from his oxy clean tea mug this morning. Gentlemen, how are you today? I'm fantastic. Thank you. I'm good. I'm great. Uh, That's what, so this is what Sully, Sully, this look good. That looks good, buddy. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm good because I'm in Florida and it's about 80 degrees and sunny, so it's uh, it's hard to not not like that. Listen, I was just there a couple of weeks ago, so I totally understand. I was in Jacksonville and Orlando. Nice. Yeah. What about yourself? Where are you in in Florida? I'm in St. Pete, uh, just Tampa Bay, home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Super Bowl champions currently. <laughs> so it's good. It's good to be in Tampa. For an Englishman, you're talking the wrong football. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> well, as you want to talk football, I'll talk football all day. You want to talk football. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, uh, you know, uh, Tom Beers is the producer of, of your series, Kings of Kush. Uh, you know, he goes from uh, Deadliest Catch to Ice Road Truckers. And now here he is easing those guys' nerves with, uh, with CBD and the reality of what you guys are bringing to television now. Yeah, we, um, we couldn't wish for a better TV partner, I think, that, than, that I don't think I know than Tom on this. I, I have great experience. I met Tom about 11 years ago in, uh, out in the Adashi at a wellness retreat in Calabasas, and I didn't even know it was Tom. It was just T-O-H-M-B. Anyway, we got chatting, and he, he ended up producing my TV show with, uh, called Pitchman that was on Discovery Channel with the late, great Billy Mays that also featured an episode about Ethan Zahn, it was amazing crunch ball. So Tom and I go back a long way. And when, um, when we decided to embark on this mission up on the, up in Vermont, I, I felt that it might be a great idea to capture it on film. And, and we did that. And Tom was just a natural, a natural phone call. He came up to the farm. He stayed in one of the RVs and his first words were, this is ambitious. Anyway, uh, we, we rolled camera. We captured a moment in time and the show's going to hit the air. Uh, this has to be a very interesting situation because less than 10 years ago, uh, you know, California eventually makes it medical grade. Uh, within the la last half decade, Colorado legalizes it. There have been people that have been imprisoned for 60 plus years, you know, or at least going to prison for 60 plus years for cannabis. And now all of a sudden, not only has it gone from counterculture, it's gone to this mainstream uh livelihood and billion dollar industry on a legalized standpoint watching that from the last 25 years because we're all over 15 years old at this point you know and in our adulthood and seeing this now how does that do for the show itself and then your own mindset of going how are so many people punished for this and now it's just commonplace Ethan, why don't you uh, have a crack at that question? I'm happy to. Uh, Ethan, I know Ethan's experience is, is uh, very unique. Well, no, it's actually not unique, but Ethan, go ahead. Sure. You know, first of all, you know, the work that Sully's doing with Mon Kush and the show Kings of Kush, it's focused around a hemp farm, which is CBD. And CBD is the non-psychoactive part of cannabis. THC is the stuff that gets you high so just to you know put things a little bit into perspective on what we've got going on right here but like i see this world you know i straddle both sides because you know part of my you know backstory is i'm a two-time cancer survivor and i was going through a pretty rough time and i got introduced to cannabis um never really used it in my life i was a professional soccer player so i was always like on the straight and narrow but when i got sick uh you know cannabis definitely helped mitigate the side effects of cancer treatments chemo radiation stem cell transplants and then once I was like deemed in remission and they sent me out on my own, for me, that's kind of like when like the shit hit the fan, basically. And I got, you know, plagued with anxiety, fear of relapse, and I just wasn't living a life I was proud of. And then I got into CBD. And for me, CBD, it just kind of laid, allowed me to take like a deep breath. You know, I wasn't like ruminating on these destructive thoughts and I just started living again. So for me, it's been a huge part of my survivorship and it's really helps me. I take it every day, like a multivitamin. So like, do I don't necessarily think I'd be where we are today if cannabis and CBD were not 
legalized or, you know, trending towards being legalized in many different states. And I'm coming at it from a medical perspective. You know, obviously there's a whole recreational world going on out there, which is really exciting and fun. And it's introducing people to cannabis and to CBD. But what I think we got going on at Mount Cush and what Sully's focused on is the medical side of it. Um, you know, his daughter was born with a genetic disorder and, and Sully can let you know why he got so excited about getting involved with CBD because it can incredibly help his daughter. Yeah, I mean, in, in a nutshell, I mean, there is a stigma around this plant. And if you come up onto our farm, our plants, you know, the hemp plants, uh, it's, you know, same species as the cannabis plant. It looks like, smells like, feels like weed. And there are still people that even, you know, come up onto our farm and they call it the devil's, the devil's plant. There's, you know, <laughs> even though our hemp is below 0.3% THC and you can smoke the whole field and not get high, people are still very, very confused about, about the cannabis space the difference between CBD and, and cannabis. And, you know, I think there's still a lot to be discovered about the medicinal benefits of it. I'm a relative newcomer to this, to this space, obviously, in the last couple of years. My, my impetus and my, um, my reason for being here is my, my, my daughter's experience, Ethan with his cancer experience, but my daughter was born with a rare genetic disorder. She was put on a horrible medication that uh, a pharmaceutical medication, uh, literally the side effects, she experienced every single side effects, including losing 20% of her body weight. She, uh, they had to make a bed in her classroom and she was uh, like a fraction of, of, of herself with, with the side effects of these pharmaceuticals. So we turned to CBD and we were able to, to swap that medication out over time with some experimentation. And when I was able to see that we were able to, you know, remedy my daughter's situation with plant-based wellness with CBD, that was, it was a no brainer for me to go, right, I want to learn more about this. Um, I didn't see myself going up to Vermont and buying a 116 acre farm and, you know, growing 170,000 plants. But when I was 23, I left England with absolutely no money uh, to come to America and sell mops, you know, was, and everyone thought I was crazy. I'm, I'm leaving to America, everybody, and I'm going to get on television. I'm going to sell mops. And everyone thought I was crazy back then. And, and lo and behold, 25 years later, I managed to eke out, a, a, you know, a, a, a nice, you know, I'm very happy with what happened here. But this is very, very, this is the hardest project I've ever done. Um, uh, you know, buying the farm was something that I wanted to do to make sure we were authentic and that I understood it and I'd be able to experience the whole from seed to finish product. And then with the help of my partner, Dave, and, and the whole team and Ethan being part of the team, we wanted to make a, a next level product. And we've done that at Mount Cush. But, you know, back to your question about people serving time for cannabis related and marijuana related uh, crimes. I mean, I, I think that, you know, it's, you know, over time, I, I attitudes change towards certain things. And I, I, I think it's great that this is coming out of the shadows into the mainstream. And, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of the people that fought before us. It's, I'm, we're privileged to be in this space where we can, we can go down this road without the fear of, um, of being arrested. And I, I think that there's more, there's more to come as people learn more about this plant and more about the medicinal benefits of it. I think there's, there's, there's more to come and it's exciting times ahead. Right. Like the, the culture has shifted. I'm originally from San Francisco. So I was used to, you know, the stoner, dirty hippie, smelling like patchouli, all that stuff. And then I, I used to always say potheads are, are, the, uh, are the most disrespectful drug addicts because they've invaded our airspace with the stench of this stuff. You know, people don't go around blowing cocaine in your face. I'm not saying that you should do cocaine by any means. I'm just saying that, you know, they don't go around blowing it in your face going, hey, you should join in on the party. You know, so that's why I always respected the people that did the edibles more than anything. But, you know, the culture has shifted. The identity has shifted. It's no longer the dirty hippie the, that's taken over. It's the medical aspect of it. And in California, we made the mistake of, you know, going from the legal, uh, uh, sorry, from the medical grade stuff to legalized stuff. And it falls under alcohol regulations now. And what would have had, you know, 70 milligrams of CBD now has 10 milligrams of CBD, uh, whether you're doing gummies or, or, or cookies or whatever. So now you're getting a, a heavier uh, content, uh, calorie content in comparison to what you would have beforehand because of the regulations that have gone into it. Have you noticed that with the legalization in your states and, and the areas that you're in, that the, T, that the um, sorry, CBD levels were forced to be dropped because of certain regulations, no longer being classified as medical, now being classified as, uh, as uh, recreational? 
Um, and it's, it differs state by state. In Vermont, it's a very lenient state, and I'm actually in Florida now, which is where my studio is based out of. But in Flo in Vermont, we, we've got re we're really, really progressive. And it is it is confusing with the dosage right now. We're actually seeing in in the trend in the industry now is 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 higher dosage. You know, a thousand milligram will be considered a, a high dosage right now for a tincture, and they're up you know fifteen hundred. We've seen two thousand milligrams, so we're seeing more and more constant you know the concentrate going up. Um, you know, one of the things I'm super proud of is the ingredients in ours. We're using a rosin based. Um, so it's, it's a, a very, very close to the fingerprint of the actual plant itself. So, you know, I think that state by state, I mean, it's actually, I'll tell you, I've actually been trying to put together a commercial, not a commercial. Yeah, it is a commercial for, for, uh, you know, our product right now. We still can't get it on television because of the different laws, state by state. It's really, really uh, frustrating when you've got something that's federally legal from the 2018 Farm Bill, but still in some states, you know, the regulations are this and in other states it's wide open. So it's frustrating. We're on it. And, um, you know, we're hopefully it's the whole my prediction is that it's going to become more and more and more acceptable when it'll be no different than, you know, going to buy, you know, over the counter ibuprofen, hopefully, where, you know, there, there's less and less regulation. Right. Um Not noticing the trends and the ebb and flow, uh, we all lived through the 1980s. The 1980s essentially were the cartoons were a giant toy commercial for the toys that they'd advertise six times throughout an episode. And they said, no, you can't advertise to kids. And then the 1990s are ushered in and they lifted all the regulations on advertising pharmaceutical drugs, which had never been seen before. And now we're still allowed to advertise pharmaceuticals, but we're still not allowed to advertise toys or, or in this case, CBD. Um, where's the rationale behind this? What's the lunacy behind this? And since you guys are working in this industry, what's your guys' lobby doing to push to allow CBD to be advertised on television? Um, Ethan, you chime in. I, I have a very strong opinion on this, but I'll let you, uh, you, you chime in, Ethan. Yeah, I can't necessarily say this is my area of expertise, but, you know, the one thing I do know that, you know, is beautiful about Kings of Kush, this new show on Vice, is that, you know, we see it as an educational opportunity to educate potential consumers. People are confused about what the product is, what is CBD, what is THC. So this that's a huge part of it, right? Because there aren't that uh, it's not federally regulated right now, CBD. So there's different potencies, there's different, you know, uh, dosages, there's different levels. So like no one really knows how it's grown, how it's processed, you know, what's going into earth. What they're doing at Moncush, you know, it's US certified organic hemp. It's US certified organic processing. He said like, oh, it's a giant panini press where they throw the flour in, they squeeze it. And the goop that comes out is fresh, squeeze cbd that's what they put in their bottles and it's exact fingerprint of the plant with all the terpenes all the cbd all the cannabinoids so in that part of it i think the show is going to do an incredible job to help educate the general public on what cbd is how it's grown how it's processed so i think that's a really good thing if we're looking at quote unquote advertising it's an educational television show with some entertainment as well but i think the, the consumer is going to come away a lot more knowledgeable about making a healthy decision if they're going to go to purchase this stuff. Okay. I mean, my, my take on the, the, the television advertising, it's, it, it comes down to money and, you know, pharmaceutical industry is billions and billions of dollars. And, you know, the FDA um, basically states that the only way to cure a, a disease is with a drug and that, you know, the drugs have to be FDA approved and the big pharma companies, you know, throw massive and massive amounts of money at these, these drugs. And that is, you know, which generally led to believe that if you have a heart condition, you have to take a drug, a pharmaceutical drug. If you, uh, I mean, the biggest crisis in the last couple of years was the opioid crisis. If you have pain, well, we'll give you opioids. And we all, you know, all of a sudden you break, a, you know, you break your arm snowboarding in Stowe and they give you a o opioid. And before you know it, you're living in a cardboard box under a bridge, you know, uh, take, you know, doing heroin and die of an overdose. That, that pharmacy, you know, and, and no one, everyone seemed to be okay with that. You know, N not that it's, you know, it was like, well, this is, we just hand out opioids. And then finally, people started realizing the epidemic and the size of the problem. And now, you know, it's, it's coming under control. And this is where the hypocrisy is, you know, um, the plant-based wellness that you get from a, a, a hemp plant is, is if it can replace or help, you know, someone wean themselves off of some of these pharmaceutical drugs and some of them do a great job. Don't get me wrong. I don't, you know, I'm all for the right pharmaceutical for the right, um, 
the right you know ailment but it seems like we we knee jerk to these pharmacy i mean you see the ads on tv side effects include nausea stomach ache dizziness sudden loss of appetite diarrhea death you know suicidal thoughts <laughs> right. let me take one of those products right I, i'd rather um, be depressed than take an antipsychotic right, right. yeah title. so yeah. um look it's Everyone's different. I'm not a doctor. I know what I experienced with with my own daughter, and I'm very happy that I was she was able to substitute her, you know, what was uh, you know her condition with uh, with plant based wellness. So, and like Ethan said, the show is a little glimpse into the. It's a peeling back the curtain, right? There's still this mysterious, a lot of misunderstanding about this plant. I'm a regular guy, regular father. I want the best for my father. I've never farmed anything, but you know, this is a plant that, you know, 90 days, it's incredible what it does. It starts off with a little tiny seed that's the size of a, you know, a little BB. In 90 days, it's eight foot tall and flowering with these beautiful flowers that contain um, the CBD and the CBN and the CBG and, the, and everything that, that goes along with it. Still, there's a lot of unknowns, but it's, um, it's exciting to be on the, I don't want to say we're on the cutting edge because we I was late into the game, really. I mean, there's there's people who've been doing this a before a lot long, long time before us, but it's with we're, we're doing something with solventless, with chemical free. Filming it was like, hey, let's capture this moment in time. Let's there's two guys going up there to to help people like Ethan, to help my daughter, and, and try and make the best uh, finished product possible. So um, hopefully. As each day goes by, people are going to open their eyes and this will be, you know, there was a time when you could advertise cigarettes on TV, right? And that's now gone. We've got to the point, okay, this is a bad idea. And I think that people are just going to become more and more um, open to the, the benefits and, the, and what, you know, what this amazing plant can do for people. Right. Before we get more in depth into the show itself, since Ethan, you are a two-time cancer survivor and I'm so thrilled that you're still with us, you know, on, on this side of, uh, of, the, of the living um, you know, Thanks. we've, we've mentioned the, the, um, the opioid crisis and then, you know, chemo and everything else that you possibly went through. Um, and they always say there's no money in the cure. Uh, when you find something like CBD that's helped you out post cancer twice, uh, how does that make you feel after gone through everything, going through everything else that, that you faced? Like, do you feel that you were gypped early on and that you suffered unnecessarily when there was this option or are you happy that you suffered endured and now you have this option that you could use it as a learning experience to help others that you know are fortunate enough to to go a, an easier route than you had it well and obviously uh you know chemotherapy radiation two stem cell transplants you know i credit that to saving my life uh, i don't credit like cbd to saving my life and curing me of cancer However, so I'm, I'm on both sides, you know, I, I definitely bridged the gap and tried some alternative therapies and, and CBD for me was one of them. But like, I would be taking, you know, uh, Zofran for nausea, Ativan for anxiety, Percocet for pain, Ambien for sleep. And then I'd wake up in the morning, I have to pop a freaking Adderall to get to the doctors. And like, I just was sick of living this lifestyle. It's, and that's what that was prescribed to me from the doctors during chemotherapy. And so, or I could have a little brownie with CBD and THC in it. And it just changed my life. I was much nicer to be around. I could sleep. I was hungry. I was giggling. So for me, it was just, it was a natural decision. You know, like I always say like nature is the world's pharmacy. And so one of the chemotherapy drugs I was on, um, uh, Vin Christine was derived from a rare African flower called the rosy periwinkle. So I'm a big fan of using nature to derive, you know, medical, you know, Western medicine as well. So I think I learned from my experience and yes, this is huge for me to be involved with Moncush and have a platform now to educate other people about, you know, more plant-based wellness. And so that's a huge part of why I got involved with Sully and the farm and the TV show. Wow. And, it, you know, basically you were a walking medicine cabinet and I'm glad that your kidneys and liver are fine. That's uh, soon to be seen. <laughs> yeah, Ethan, no, I, no, you're absolutely never, right. No, I never realized, you never told me the regimen they put you on. I mean, that is unbelievable. And I understand why they would do it. I get it. you got anxiety, then you need to sleep, then you got to wake up, and then you got to just function. And That's not even including like, you know, the immunosuppressant, you know, drugs, some of the chemotherapy pills I was on. Like that was just like the stuff almost over the counter, not the real like medical cancer stuff. So yeah, I was, you know, 15, 25 pills a night just to get to bed. And I didn't want to live this like synthetic lifestyle anymore. I just couldn't do it. Right. 
And now with Kings of Kush itself, I mean, Ethan, you're, you've become a part of this along, you know, Tom's not here, so he can't defend himself if we say anything <laughs> mean about him, which I'm totally kidding. Uh, <laughs> you know, An Anthony, you're, you're in this with, with Mont Kush and everything else. How did the series come about and how did you two come together to be a part of this with Tom? Well, Ethan and I met uh, back in 2002 <laughs> on Fiji, in Fiji, the, uh, down in the South Pacific. We were doing an adventure race called the Eco Challenge. And I Sounds also awful met, like, going to Fiji, by the way. Andrew. Yeah. Well, actually, we saw a side, <laughs> it is of, awful. It is we awful. Saw a side of Fiji that most people, I mean, I'm talking mud, uh, like jungle trench warfare. But anyway, I met Ethan down there and I also met my, my partner on Mount Kush, Dave Christian down in Fiji and um, Dave and I stayed in touch and Ethan and I stayed in touch. We became friends, you know, we'd see each other at least a couple times a year and, and you know, down in, in New York, he, Ethan lived in New York, but um, um, so, you know, we, we were friends and then I met Tom 10 years ago and I, when I did, when I went up to Vermont in 2018 in uh, fall of 2018 and I was sitting at my friend's, there was a friend of mine's farm and I had this idea of like, you know, I want to do this. I've had a great time in my TV career with OxyClean and all these brands that I've, I've, I've brought to life. But I like, want to do something here to help my daughter. I want to try something new. And it was li literally a crazy idea. So I knew that it would make good television. I thought, you know what? This has got, this has got some elements that should be watchable. It's got two guys who are completely fish out of water yep. are trying something that they've never done before to help a little girl that's going to cost millions of dollars um, in, in a space that's kind of exciting and, the, and the, the, the failure, the epic fail that could happen here, it's, it, it should make pretty compelling television. I never farmed anything in my life. And I also felt that we were capturing and we captured a moment in time. Um, you know, this, this period we're going through now, if you will, the renaissance of, of cannabis and, and hemp is something that it's, it's gonna, it'll be nice to have it documented and to see our struggle. And I, I also, you know, it was a struggle. I mean, obviously this is a, they, you know, they, you'll see the show and hopefully it's entertaining. I, I want it to be two things. I want it to be entertaining and educational. And um, Tom was, uh, you know, Tom has such great experience with Deadliest Catch, with Ice Road Truckers, with Axemen. Um, Tom was just a, a natural fit. And Ethan has got, I think Ethan actually claims himself as the most, um, <laughs> he's got more hours on, on reality television than <laughs> anyone else in the history of reality television. So Ethan was a natural fit. Am I correct in that, Ethan? Or is, uh, is Boston Rob got more than you? I think Boston Rob's got more, but uh, I'm a close second. Hey, you're better though. I mean, I've been doing it for 20 years, so <laughs> we're we're en going to end up seeing Ethan on 90 Day Fiance in a, in a couple of seasons <laughs> just so he can top the numbers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we um, we went up there with one camera. We shot um, we shot in the wettest spring in, on record in 2019. It was up, the weather was absolutely terrible, and um, you know as as we we as you know, Tom would come up and visit and then we decided to kind of crew up and have more cameras and it slowly just turned into what, what you're going to see on Vice on Tuesday nights and it's on vicetv.com. And, um, you know, it, it covers everything from the very, very first seed that we put in the ground to how we came up with the brand name itself, Mont Kush. Mont is a shout out to a mountain. We're on the side of a mountain. It's also, uh, you know, Green Mountain State, Vermont. And we're very close to Mont Pelier. So that's where the Mont comes from and, and Kush. We're getting a little static on the title of the show online about Kings of Kush, but um, Kush actually in Hindi is uh, kind of uh, translates into happiness. So um, happy. So happy mountain is, uh, is what it is. And uh, we, we left a little piece of our souls up on that mountain, the battle of that mountain, as my partner Dave says. And I'm just happy to have Ethan along for the ride. I mean, Ethan and I have been friends forever. Um, I remember going up to visit him in New York City when he was battling his chemo and we kicked the soccer ball around and he was uh, literally almost like a skeleton. I think you're about as close to a skeleton as you could get, Ethan. And it's just, I'm so happy that, you know, Ethan moved up to New Hampshire to have a, a more serene, uh, quiet life from the big city life in New York City. And uh, it was just as a few hour drive from the farm. And it was great to, you know, Ethan's up for anything. <clears throat> and I knew, it would be, uh, I knew it would be fun. So I'm really excited about the TV show. Uh, Anthony, before I, before I forget, and I know people are going to be wondering, how is your daughter doing, by the way? We need to address that before we continue she's on. She's doing that. great. She has a constant struggle, so it's never ending. Um, she's 10, 
Um, she has a lot of difficulty sleeping and the CBD is a lifesaver uh, before she goes to bed and to keep her, to help, help her with her sleep. Um, we really try, her mom is a, 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 a PhD in school psychology. So much, much more intelligent than me when it comes to, you know, figuring out the needs and wants of my daughter. But she was, you know, her, her, she was born with the rare genetic disorders. Uh, the seizures are completely gone. Um, she, Devin is, doesn't talk like a neurotypical kid. So she word assimilates and she does her best and she, you know, but, um, and she'll get very, very fixated on, she loves to surf behind the boat. I figured out a way to get her up on a, a wakeboard with me. So the two of us go and she'll get very, very fixated on an activity or somebody she wants to see. And I find with the CBD, it sort of just mellows her a little bit. Unfortunately, I can't have a full conversation with, with my daughter, but I, I see the, the, uh, the kind of calming effects and a help with her sleep. And, um, and also to, to have her off Kepra was, uh, was life changing. Um, that that was. Uh, I actually don't like to mention the drug by name because many people benefit from it. But to have her off the pharmaceutical she was on was is, uh, was great. But she's ten. She's doing great. I saw her this morning. Gave her a little kiss. She was actually on her phone all morning. Didn't want to talk to me. But typical <laughs> ten year old, right on her phone. <laughs> ten year olds with phones. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Well, to be to be fair about you being thrilled that she's off the pharmaceutical, even though it's helped other people, she's still 10. She's still physically and, and mentally developing. So it might be a little early for her to be continuously on that on that pharmaceutical as she's as she continues to grow. But who knows what will happen as, as an adult and if it was a different situation, you know, 15 years down the line, down the line from now, if she needed it. But, yeah, I mean, so. there's there's no doubt that you know some of these some of these pharmaceuticals are, are essential. Like Ethan said, he you know for his cancer treatment, you know there's, there's a part of that community that helped the reason why he's here today. But you know if you can if you can experiment with the plant based wellness and and also you know and get it right, so you're not a walking cocktail of, uh, of toxicity. I think it's um I think it's a it, it's a great thing, and I love that you know even. Every, the things we're putting into our body now, I think, is, is people just get more and more educated. People are learning the dangers of processed food and the, the benefits of just, you know, uh, you just seeing this shift, I think, towards just wellness and mental wellness with COVID this year. I think people are really giving mental health like, OK, I'm taking care of my physical health. What about my mental health? What can I do to 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 help that? So anyway, thanks for asking about my little girl. She's she's uh, she's great. Thanks. Of course, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear it, and I'm glad that Ethan's here. Your daughter's here. Everybody's healthy, especially in this insane world that we're living in. Uh, you know, restrictions are slowly starting to be lifted, so we'll see how things go within the next year, year and a half. On top of everything else, um, you know, the series itself had just premiered this past this past uh, Tuesday on uh, on Vice. I believe it was right after or right before. Um, uh, the uh, the wrestling show that's on there, which name Dark is Dark Side uh, of the Ring. Dark Side of the Ring. Thank you. I love the series, and I couldn't remember the name of it for the life of me. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it, it's a good lead into a part of this because if we go back only 25 years, how many wrestlers died from opioid addiction? How many wrestlers died from uh, from soma abuse and the, and that sort of thing? So to see that you know what happened with that tragedy, and now you guys are being a shining light in an alternative to opioids helps quite a bit. Um, what can we expect this coming season from Kings of Kush? You know, like what should we look forward to? Is it going to be more like a news program? Obviously reality shows, they like to create drama and not blaming Survivor for any of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that sort of thing. So like, what, what can we expect in the coming season? Um, you know, it wasn't really difficult to fabricate anything up on the farm. The, uh, be, because we did not know what we were doing, and I am talking like we didn't realize that rocks are a problem when it comes to farm equipment. Most farmers will, will t we were told that our farm grows <laughs> rocks and we were just oh, no big deal. Well, we, you know, it literally almost ground our whole up. We lost, almost lost everything to just simple, plain old rocks. And then the amount of money we had to spend to get the rocks out of the meadows, we had to lay 55 miles of irrigation of which we never laid any irrigation before. Um, we had a, a early frost, which really uh, put us on our tail. We had to figure out how to dry in a very short period of time. And the, the season in Vermont moves very quickly, as you know. And, you know, um, we had a window of, of less than 30 days to, to get 75,000 plants the size of Christmas trees down the side of a mountain and dry them before the gray mold sets in. 
We had problems with males. All, the, all of us, our plants are feminized, um, but you get a, one or two males in there, it can ruin the whole crop. We had uh, security issues. We had uh, financial issues. <laughs> we had issues with law enforcement. We, you know, pretty much everything that, uh, you know, that I went into this thinking, oh, this is going to cost, you know, half a million bucks. It, I was way, way underprepared for the cost of it. So, and um, just the, uh, you know, there's a couple, there's, there's tears in this show. I lost my father in the middle of it all. Um, you know, and, condolences, and by the way. I remember, you know, that, that was horrible, you know, obviously losing any, and I, I was like, woke up in the morning, I'm like, gotta go to work and I'm gonna, I'm gonna battle through this. So, you know, no one knows how to make the drama like Tom, you know, and then you throw Ethan in the mix, you got, you know, it's a beautiful combination, right? Ethan knows how to turn it on. But there, there's, there's, there's love. A lot of the drama that you see in the show wasn't manufactured, you know, it's not manufactured. It happened. And then they, they always, the guys in post do a great job of building around it. But um, they find these moments of sheer terror or victory or, you know, uh, horror. And they, they're like, right, this, and it, you know, they're always trying to get a laugh, right? But ultimately, you, you see our struggle. And it's, the, it, you know, to use the phrase, the struggle was real. And it still continues to be real. Right. And, you know, the music adds to it, the tension adds to it, them figuring out where to break for commercial so we don't change the channel and come back real quick all, all adds to it. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, Ethan, I do have to ask this since you have been on Survivor a couple of times. Uh, you know, if we want to add more drama to King of Kush, you going to bring in Johnny Fairplay? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I will not be bringing him. He smoked the entire farm himself. <laughs> Oh, man. No, I mean, I've been on a lot of reality shows, some I'm proud of, some I'm not so proud of. Survivor is full on legit, like compared to all the other ones. But yeah, you know, they didn't like in Survivor, you don't need to create drama. Everyone thinks things are, you know, um, fabricated. But listen, if you take away food, water, you're tired, you're hungry, we'll do anything. You hang a Dorito in front of my face, I'll jump through hoops to get it, right? They don't need to create the drama up there. It's just what was happening on top of it. They didn't need to create any drama. It was happening and it's on its own. And we are just lucky that there's a camera crew there capturing it all. And this is very much a man versus nature type show. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, one of the things that I, you know, this is a, we underestimated mother nature. We really did. You know, uh, when it starts, when it rains and it rains for days on end and you're like, yeah. I didn't see that coming. And then the harvest, all of a sudden you get two days of a hard freeze and you know, it's one minute, it's 80 degrees and sunny and you're sitting on the top of your mountain and looking at your beautiful mountain of hemp. And then the two days later, it's, it's covered in frost and it's it, it, the panic and the unknowns, the fact that it was our first year, we, I was in a constant state of, of I, I mean, I, I, the anxiety level that I suffered through up there, and we all did, everyone who worked on that, that farm, there's some guys that didn't make it, everyone ex had a, a life-changing experience, I think, uh, for better, for worse, working with that. And I have the utmost respect for farmers. Now, when I drive past a field of corn or a field of maize or a strawberry field, I'm like, oh, okay, respect. Right. You know, respect. <laughs> <laughs> when you go buy your food at the store, your corn, your Brussels sprouts, th th thank the farmer that grew them. Because let me tell you, farming is difficult. <laughs> Absolutely. Gentlemen, before I, do, I let you go, I do have to ask this. Uh, you know, cigars... Uh, the selling point, oh, this is a Cuban seed. It was grown in Honduras. It was rolled in Miami. What, you know, whatever is going on with the cigars is the selling point. You know, wines, oh, the grapes and the vintage and, you know, whatever else. This is from the hillside of Nice in France. Or this is, you know, a Tuscan grape or whatever that, that goes along with that and selling wine. Do you see that becoming a part of, uh, of your CBD industry in the, the selling aspect of it? You know, this is... A Vermont-based plant. This is an African-based plant, an Indian, et cetera, et cetera, that that would entice more people to purchase the item. Absolutely. In a nutshell, I would say ninety percent of the CBD out there really does is is white label CBD. Someone's taken some isolate, they put it in a bottle, they mix it up, they put a name on it, and that's what you buy. There's no, you don't know where it comes from, you don't know how it was processed. It's just, it's it's low grade CBD. What we've done up in Vermont. We took our seeds from a company in Oregon because it's the same latitude and they respond to the light of the, the latitude about roughly around 45 degrees north. But the fact that we take the seeds from that are made to grow at that latitude, we plant them in an organic, we have our farm has an organic certification. 
And then we use a press to do a solventless extraction to extract the rosin, which is about as pure as a, a form of CBD as you can get, and then mix it into fraction, uh, organic fractionated coconut oil and bottle it in the town of Plainfield in Vermont. I, I think that when you are looking for, you know, people love the experience. They love to, the authenticity and the fact that it was real. And I knew that it would be a struggle for me that, oh, it's the OxyClean guy. He's just jumping in this. He's just going to do what he does. I wanted to A, learn about it. I wanted to educate myself and in turn educate others, but I wanted to make sure that people understood that I did this the hard way. And you're right. I think what, what we've done, you know, people love the, the wine, that the grapes that were grown and pressed and stomped on and the cheese that was done. And, and we, we're doing the same thing. And uh, um, we've really tried to make, and I think we've achieved a, a, a next level uh, product with our with our Mont Kush. We, we, we don't have a lot of it. We, uh, we're trying to make it affordable to everybody. And ultimately I did this for my little girl and I wanted her to um, have the best that she could have. So she was my true North on this. And in doing that, and with the help of Ethan and my partner, Dave, and the whole team at Mont Kush, boys and girls, uh, we, we've, we've made something that really is, it's, you know, it's like Ben and Jerry's ice cream is from the great state of Vermont. Uh, we're, we're about 20 minutes from Ben and Jerry's. And uh, we'd like to be following their footsteps. Like you, you know, come to the farm, you get a free tub of ice cream. If you visit Ben and Jerry's, we'll give you a free, come and visit us and, and experience the whole thing. It's very, very authentic. I think I we need a CBD ice cream. We need a Ben and Jerry's mom. We are working with uh, the Ben and go. Jerry are watching. We, we, we want to work with you. All right, we'll tag them in this. Gentlemen, King of Kush uh, is Tuesday nights on Vice TV and vice.com. Ethan, Ethan Zahn, a true survivor, not just because of the series, but his whole life experience. Anthony Sullivan, you know, living the immigrant dream, helping his daughter out more, more than anyone can. Uh, where can we find you guys on social media? Where can we find the show on social media? And remind us again, uh, you know, Mount Kush, where we can find the product itself. So the website is uh, Mount Kush, M-O-N-T-K-U-S-H. That's M-O-N-T-K-U-S-H dot com. On there, you'll see everything from our tinctures to our gummies to our base, really cool baseball caps. And we're, we're expanding our product line every day. Um, the, if the TV show is obviously on Vice TV, 10.30 on Tuesdays, and it's airing over the weekend as well. But the times are unknown at the moment. But if you miss the show on TV, just go to Vice TV and download the app. Or go to the App Store and download the Vice TV app. You can catch it there as well. And social media, uh, with Mont Kush all over there on every single uh, social media outlet. My personal uh, Instagram, if anybody wants to hit me up on Twitter or, or Instagram, I'm not a big Twitter user, but Sully on TV. That's S-U-L-L-Y on TV. Sully on TV. And remember, OxyClean gets the tough stains out. Ethan. How can I follow that? You're a natural, oh, buddy. You cannot goodness. follow that. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just at Ethan Zahn on Instagram is a great place to find me. My website's ethanzahn.com, but uh, I would definitely hit up Mont Kush first before you check me out. Perfect. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Old School time. Survivor t-shirt. Ethan is wearing Old School Survivor t-shirts. They're available from ethanzahn.com and the Crunch Bowl, the legendary Crunch Bowl also available. Ethan has got a couple side hustles that are worth mentioning. But wait. Oh, wait. man. Oh. I, need, I need to put you on retainer, Sully. So there no you problem. go. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Thank you so much. I can't wait. King of Kush, Tuesday nights, Vice TV, Vice.com. Anthony Sullivan, Ethan Zahn, it's been a great pleasure.